Anyway, overall, overall, I think you can argue that the combined conspiracy of Christianity and colonialism resulted in the abandoning of African values. The combined conspiracy of Christianity and colonialism resulted in the abandoning of, of Christian values. Um, but there's one thing that I should draw your attention to, ladies and gentlemen. Education, especially education, was a, a double-edged sword. Education not was um, a liberator. It helped us, our nationalists, to shake off colonial rule. So while the, the colonial masters thought that the little education they were giving to the people was enough to keep them contented and remain uncivilized, it actually broadened some of our nationalist minds and they began to fight colonial rule. So, for instance, Kenneth Kaunda, Simon Kapwepwe, and others were educated at Luwa Mission of the Free Church of Scotland. And they became radical nationalists. In fact, the founder of the nationalist movement, if you are a historian, uh, Donald Siwale from Mwenzo Mission was also a missionary, ed mission educated person. Harry Kumbula was educated by the primitive Methodists in Namwala, became a teacher, became a nationalist. Mainza Chona was educated by the Jesuits at Chikuni became a nationalist, though he did not become a teacher. He, he, he took law instead. So education, so, so education, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that education was ambivalent. Yeah. In the, in the thinking of the colonial masters is that uh, this would at least give them some rudiments to operate in our colonial structures. But at the same time, it simply opened their eyes and they began to question things. But of course, nationalism has, is an interplay of so many factors. There were other issues that opened up the minds of the people. But even mi some missionaries contributed to nationalism, and some of them were nationalists, actually. Okay.